Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is April. Welcome. I hope you stick around and subscribe to my channel somewhere down there. So I know it's been two months, probably closer to three months since I've been away from this channel and I do apologize. Um, it's been for a couple of reasons that I've been away. But I was away for two major reasons. One, I started a lash line, which I will make a video about my lash line very soon. Um, and two, which is the topic for this video, is my life as a cosmetics chemist slash skincare chemist, which is what I want to talk to you guys about. I originally didn't want to make this video about, you know, my career outside of YouTube and blogging and all that stuff and modeling, which is what I normally share online. But, you know, I just really felt it in my heart to do this because I know that I'm not the only one that might have struggled with this. So I thought, why not make a video and sort of educate someone out there that might be going through the same thing. If you're interested in knowing more about my career outside of what you see on the internet, then stick around. As you guys already know, I'm a model, but something you guys don't know about me is I have a background in science. So I have a lot of math and biology and chemistry and physics and science jambalaya really in this little brain of mine. So I've been in science for a really long time. I graduated with a degree in chemistry. A little while after graduation, I really was wanting a job. And um, the primary reason why I did chemistry, although I loved chemistry ever, like since I remember I've always loved chemistry, the main reason I majored in chemistry was because I was wanting to go to pharmacy school, which I did, and that didn't work out, which I can make a separate video talking about my experience in pharmacy school and why I didn't think it was right fit for me, um, and just why it just didn't work out in general. I can do that, so thumbs up this video if you, if you want to hear more about that. Um, but anyway, so... I got this degree in chemistry, did a little bit of research, and I decided I wanted to do cosmetics chemistry since I was already into makeup and beauty and hair. I was like, hey, why not? Why can't I formulate foundations and lip glosses and lipsticks? Um, so that was what I decided on. And of course, this is the easy part is deciding on what to do. The hard part is actually getting a job and getting a reputable company to work for. And this was a struggle that I... Um, was in for a while. I actually, it took me a long time to find uh, a job in as a chemist, uh, essentially, which is the reason why I decided to make this video to sort of guide whoever is out there that has a chemistry degree and doesn't really know what to do with it. Especially for those of you who have decided not to continue in pharmacy or nursing or medical school or whatever it is um, that you're not passionate about anymore or were never passionate about. Um, there's other things that you can do with your degree. So without further ado, I'm going to sort of tell you guys in general the stuff that you can do with a chemistry degree. With a chemistry degree, you can be a quality analyst chemist, which is also known as a QA chemist. And the other one is also known as a QC chemist. You can also get a job as a farm tech. You can be a cosmetics chemist, which is what I'm doing. And there's also numerous things that you can do outside of all that, you know, like animal testing or working in the lab and developing and research. But the major focus of this video is working as a cosmetics chemist. There's three parts to working as a cosmetics chemist. There is the R&D, there is compounding, and there is the process chemist. Which my job title right now is working as a process chemist, but when you work in either one of these three parts, you're gonna end up being interconnected because you're all working towards the same purpose. So you have to have open communication between or within these three uh, channels. So like I said, it took me a while to get a job as a cosmetics chemist. So I'm going to tell you guys what to do right to get your foot in the door and at least get that interview and then hopefully land your dream job as a cosmetics chemist. So how to get a job as a cosmetics because this is such a tongue twister. <laughs> How to get a job as a cosmetics chemist. One, you wanna draft a great resume. So go on Google, literally type into Google, resume examples of a cosmetics chemist, like word to word. And I promise you, you will find a lot of examples. Pick the one that you find makes the most sense to you. You know, the one that at least looks the most professional out of all the ones that you find. And then try to make your own resume match up to that one. Now, don't copy the resume word to word, but use similar words, synonyms, and things that match up to that resume, just so your resume at least looks presentable. Number two step is you wanna create a great LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is so imperative, and I had no idea how powerful LinkedIn was until I actually started utilizing it. Your LinkedIn profile really should look like your resume, so all of those bullets that you've highlighted on your resume 
as your current position or past positions comes in handy on LinkedIn. So literally just type word to word, well not word to word, but like try to replicate your resume on your LinkedIn. So when you do have an interview with an employer and they look on your LinkedIn profile, it does match up and there's no discrepancies. After you create a really amazing profile on LinkedIn, you want to search local companies in your area. Now, when I first started looking for a job as a cosmetics chemist, I would type in L'Oreal, um, Lancome, you know, the big brands. But these companies are looking for the people that already have tons of experience because they don't really have room to teach new people to start up. So you want to research local cosmetics uh, labs in your area. So for me, I live in Dallas, so I would research chemical labs that are in the Dallas area. And when you've Googled those companies, try to break it down to so at least three profiles that interest you and then you can start working from there. On those individuals' profiles, scroll down to the companies that they first started their career in, then I will look to see the companies that they first started off in. Those are the companies that you want to contact. You don't want to contact the companies that they're currently working for because chances are those companies are also looking for people that already have tons of experience. So start with the companies they first started working for right out of college. Write down all their emails and phone numbers and start to contact these companies. Call all of those companies and start to ask if they have any open positions available. And even if they do not have any open positions available, you can go ahead and still send them an email and let them know that you're interested if a position does come available. If there is a position available, well, lucky you. Now you can start to prepare for an interview. Do the same thing, go on Google and type how to prepare for an interview. Also, you can watch YouTube videos. There's tons of videos that can help you out on YouTube on how to prepare for interviews and make sure in the interview that you're confident and you give very clear and concise answers. Quickly just to go back on something real quick. So on your resume, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, I don't really have any experience on my resume. What I would tell you or advise you to do is capitalize on whatever company that you've worked for in the past. It doesn't even have to be a chemist position. And capitalize on that. Sell yourself. Capitalize on the research you did in college. Capitalize on any little thing you feel might be in or come in handy or an internship that you did capitalize on it you can just sort of try to match up what they're looking for with what you did at your previous company just so that you're more uh, sellable and you know you don't look like you just don't have any experience in uh, in that world because at the end of the day yes some people are still open to hiring right out of college but a lot of companies would still very much prefer to hire someone that has even a little less experience and for me, it was one of the internships that I did that sold me. After your interview, make sure that you send a thank you email to whoever interviewed you. Say, hey, thank you for having me over. I really uh, enjoyed my time with you guys and I really hope to come on board. Um, I'm excited to join the company. Just say really good things and that way that person feels like you really want this job. You're thinking about them even after the interview and they will most likely, hopefully, consider you for the position. So number pretty sure I'm messing up on the numbers here. This is probably 0.5. When you start the job as a new hire, if you get hired, don't feel like, oh, I've arrived and I can do whatever I want in the job. No, I want you to still keep working hard, still keep doing everything you said you would do at the interview. Be hardworking, ask lots of questions. Uh, remember, you're still new and your first impression matters. Don't think that you can get away with whatever uh, the first couple months and then try to fix it later. Um, they're going to remember all those things that you did that weren't exactly good for the company and probably trade you in for someone else. So again, just be the best version of you that you can be and be the best first employee and who knows, you might get a promotion. And that really was my last and final point. And with that, I will end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, like and of course subscribe to my channel if you want more of these. I will make more. But until then, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.